You're listening to the Andre Segovia Show. Welcome to Andres Segovia Show, everyone. I am your host, Andres Segovia, the honors broker. In this episode, I am reposting an episode that originally aired on my YouTube channel. So if you're going to subscribe to my YouTube channel, I say, please go. That's at youtube.com forward slash the Andres Segovia. And when you're there, uh, you can subscribe and hit the bell so you can be notified whenever I post up a new video. Sometimes these episodes from the podcast do make an appearance on the YouTube channel, but the YouTube channel is devoted more to video-based content and more episodes are going to be posted there along the way on an irregular basis, but they're posted nonetheless. I did make a post regarding data privacy concerns, Facebook and the Huawei ban that's still relevant now that uh, I wanted to share with all of you in case you missed out on it. So without further ado, here is my episode that aired on May 31st on my YouTube channel about data privacy concerns, Facebook, the Huawei ban, and hacking. This is something I kind of put off for a while that I really wanted to address and uh, because I was dealing with a bunch of other episodes and, of course, work, I couldn't get to this particular episode. But I'm so glad I actually waited because into this spectrum of things, uh, because it won't just be uh, real estate centric as I was intending it to be. Um, It'll be also covering technology. I mean, it is technology that I'm talking about, but I was going to approach it from a more real estate side. But now it's kind of a balance of both because it affects you whether you're in real estate or not and it's a lot of people have opinions about certain things happening as a result of privacy concerns so i want to get to the meat of what i want to talk about but because there's a lot of different things that have dropped even in the past 24 hours uh, i'm hoping to keep things as structured as possible so i might go off off script i don't have a script but i might go really off a script or a tangent if i don't if i don't keep my thoughts lined up so Here we go. Let's hope that I don't need editing for or heavy editing for this video. Okay, so first things first. In working in real estate, there's this uh, this concern with handling client uh, material because in our industry we have to for our clients deal with sensitive information. Whether you're dealing with the buyer side or the seller side, there's a lot of personal information that has to be exchanged, and a lot of it is what most people are concerned about being robbed. And the thing is, there are uh, there are people that when they get into a relationship with an agent, they are probably not thinking that in the back of their head. Of course, they might have those concerns like, oh, I'm handing this over to you, but not necessarily thinking about, well, what is the agent doing to protect these things? So that's what I want to address in this episode where us as agents and not just agents, but us as individuals can protect our private information because nowadays no such thing as privacy. It's a luxury. Um, some babies are born and their parents are already posting everything up about them on a daily basis so people know about their lives probably even better than they know themselves at that point you know so they the thing is you're being geotagged you're be, you're being uh, um your preferences are being understood your face is all over the place so there is no privacy it's a luxury if you're able to drop off the grid and uh, in knowing that like how do we as uh, as professional agents uh, protect your information when that happens because there's there's a bit of an understanding or like an understood you that when you hand me some information, I'm safeguarding it for you. But the agent is under no um, requirement to uh, take care of your information in that sense. But we should be. And that's how I've approached my stuff. And if I'm handling your stuff, I treat it like if it was my stuff. I got to be very careful with it. And I take a lot of different precautions. And I took them before, way back when, before more security installations were in place, before all these exploits popped up all over the place. And now that they're, uh, they are all over the place, and it, all my paranoia that I had about dealing with um, certain technology that isn't uh, as secure, my, my concerns were, uh, were confirmed. Because, uh, like, I don't know, some of that stuff seems a little iffy like we we want to use android we want to use iphone but those things are targeted as well that's why i still 
rely on a blackberry to a certain extent now i don't i look for those of us that are blackberry fans um we appreciate what blackberry did and it's in some respects is still doing at, at a software level but unfortunately the platform of blackberry is basically dead now that is not around anymore it doesn't have developer supports it's uh um, the app store is basically a grave so it's not a place for for anybody that really wants to um, connect with your services today that you rely upon, especially in real estate. You're not going to get that through a BlackBerry platform. But BlackBerry still exists in the form of Android. And it's taken a while to get to it. And that's why I still carry one of these things because of the very thing of concerns of privacy and concerns of dealing with uh, personal information, not just mine, but also my clients and where I store things. So I do want to have a list of tips I want to give at the end of this video so stick around for that and i'll timestamp it too for those that, that have heard it before and don't remember they want to get back to it i'm going to give you some tips on how you can safeguard some of your information after i've talked about uh, you know, the the landscape of things regarding privacy and here's the thing some people are trying to politicize the topics of, of privacy concerns uh, like what's happening with facebook that's not a political thing it's a true thing about what facebook has done look i I use I use Facebook uh, for business to an extent. Um, I don't use it for real estate marketing. Uh, I I use uh, Instagram to a certain extent as well. But I know what I'm getting into when I'm using these social services, which is why. I, I'm selective as to what I put there. Um, I make sure I turn off like like location settings on these things, and they always they always nagging me that like, hey, uh, turn on your location. Hey, turn on your location. Like no, I don't want you to know where I am constantly. And so that if I'm making a post, I'm geotagging. Then yes, that's the only time I get permission, but not all the time where it's actively working in the background, sending information to God knows where. It doesn't need to know where I am every single second of every single day. I mean, the, the service providers already know that through GPS. You don't need to have a smartphone for them to know. So when you have all this metadata that's being exchanged with the um, service companies, well, what privacy really is there when you can be tracked even without a smartphone? If you have a, if you have a GPS enabled device, you're being tracked. And metadata tells us all that. You can read binary, you're gonna know what I'm talking about. Because they know your text, they can, they know who you're texting, what you're texting, and when you're texting, how you're texting, and if you're moving at the same time. It's kind of scary stuff to see how much can be stored in metadata that doesn't need much um, uh, like storage to be able to process that much information. Because I just give you a sample of text that also goes the same for voice and that goes the same for data. And it's crazy because when we talk about like the internet, like who's the one providing it to you? Oh, I have service with Verizon. Yeah, that you're trusting that they're taking care of your information, kind of like in real estate. When you're exchanging information with me, you're kind of trusting that I'm taking care of it. And with me, you can you can be assured that I will do my darndest to make sure your information is is taken as care as possible. And in the case of Verizon, they supposedly have that understood you. But you signed the clause that says, hey, guess what? Uh, this information you gave me here, um, I have business partners that could sure use this information. So I'm going to sell it to them. Guess what? They're not the only ones that do that. Uh, service providers are not the only ones that do that. Uh, um, like Google does that all the time. That was that was the fine print. The devil's in the details. You signed off your your rights when you did that. That's why if you're talking to your Google speaker or you're doing a Google search, it's like, oh, you know what? The, that one place in Spain. Then your email. Then your all your advertisements and maybe even when you're on Facebook, targeted ads like, hey, you were looking at hotels. Are you interested in booking one of these? Look at these deals. Or is that here? A flights to that certain part of the country you were trying to fly to and it's like oh i remember when you're there book this travel site like oh, like wow same thing with amazon same thing with facebook and sometimes it's scary because it uh, with through artificial intelligence and other algorithms it starts anticipating what you're going to want based on your behavior so they'll start throwing ads at you through there so <laughs> um the matrix is real <laughs> we're the battery to this commercial machine and it's scary to see it all play out in that way and why why am I even uh, approaching this now um, along these lines? Because of the recent Huawei ban. I, I, I actually did a video on Huawei, but then I walked it back because I'm like, I don't really want to talk about specifically Huawei. It, it ben doesn't make me, it doesn't benefit me in any single way. But in terms of what's happening in the response, the 
that's kind of what I'm more interested about. Because if you're if you're not familiar with Huawei, Huawei is like the second largest manufacturer um, of, of smartphones in the world, and they were looking to overtake um, Samsung. Samsung is number one in the world. And the thing is, when you have other governments besides the United States uh, banning uh, uh, Huawei from buying, say, 5G infrastructure or banning them all right from from doing dealings in that country, that hinders their potential to continue their expansion. And the United States has banned um, Huawei from conducting business here in the United States. And in the case Google responded about two weeks from this video where they, they removed any, uh, they, they, they canceled their licensing agreement with Huawei. So that means even though it's an Android based device, they do not have access to the Google Play Store where you can get all the apps. You can still get them illegally, not recommended because it's, it's infested with, um, with malware. You're not gonna wanna go that route because piracy is always a risk. But the thing is now those devices won't have any of those services. So how is a consumer that buys a Huawei product that without Google services is supposed to get usage out of that phone. So the Business Insider was reporting that Huawei is dropping Android as a platform altogether in June for the future devices and installing in their own operating system. And this kind of goes all the way back. For those of you that follow me since the beginning, know that my first videos was a series of a com a comparisons of mobile operating systems. Uh, Blackberry uh, operating system versus iPhone iOS um, or Apple iOS versus Windows Phone and uh, um, and Android of all sorts. So that that's how I started. I did a series of the benefits of all four versus the other one you know the pros and cons and the thing is uh, since then, the dust has settled because we had the OS wars. Those were the top four remaining, and now we only have two. A lot, but the rest of them had died off, like WebOS, Palm, um, and God knows what else was out there. Windows Mobile itself, you know, like there were a lot of different ones that were out there, and now they're not there anymore. It's just Android or iOS, and that was a result of developer support. So the developers jumped on the most popular platforms and did not support the other platforms, and basically. Is there an app for that? And if there wasn't, that's what doomed your operating system. But what about now? Are we Are returning to that moment of operating system wars again for mobile devices? Uh, probably, but the dance game is different this time because now it's being forced upon people. And when you have Huawei, that's the second largest smartphone manufacturer, having that much of a consumer base, and they replace Android with their own operating system, developers are going to have to jump on that because there is no other way to service them. So whatever code they're going to have to do, they're going to generate their own operating system uh, and their own apps for that operating system. So now it's it's basically like a monopoly being broken up and you're kind of forced to deal with all this, right? So developers will have to jump on that to support them. And I'm sure that they will because they're not going to, they're not going to want to neglect that entire market. Besides, all that millions of people that are using that Android no longer can will not bring revenue to those that can't use the Android device. So they're going to have to jump on that. So yes, this is different. A different landscape for the operating system wars. And interestingly enough, the Chinese government is looking to ban Apple uh, from from doing business in in, United St uh, in China as a retaliation for the United States ban of Huawei. So it's, wow, so this is getting big. And this is where, uh, where I touched on the video previously because uh, that, that I, I deleted because it wasn't going to make the, the air, where I originally titled it The Politics of Everything. Because of that, a lot of people are losing sight of the arguments here. They're looking, oh my gosh, this politics is Trump and the trade war versus China, you know, and they're screwing everything up in the, in the economy. There. That is not the case, but most people are going to read it that way because the media controls the narrative. Uh, the media is the gatekeeper, so they control what you, they curate the news to you just like a lot of those targeted ads do. And that's a shame because we have to have our freedom to look up the real news unfiltered, unbiased, and just read it for what it's worth and then you construct your own opinion. That's how news should be. Anyway, um, getting back to the subject at hand. The thing that's also going on, because it's not just with the United States, the privacy concerns with Huawei has also been a concern in the European Union and England. England's no longer part of the European Union to that extent, so they're separated. So uh, Huawei was banned from uh, doing 5G infrastructure, I believe, in the United Kingdom and in Germany because of the concerns of Huawei pot potentially spying on its consumers on behalf of the Chinese government. Well, yeah, Andres, but you're talking about privacy concerns, so that means we know that Facebook, Google, um, cellular, cellular phone providers here are spying on their clients yes for corporations not for the government an example would be when we had a recent terrorist attack in california uh, over in san bernardino the terrorist iphone was recovered and the government couldn't get into it because it was locked 
So the government subpoenaed Apple to give them access to the iPhone and Apple resisted. And that caused an uproar in the tech community. It's like, well, is, uh, should Apple be obligated to support the government here in releasing uh, the access to a consumer's device knowing that it's for a terrorist investigation? Or should they hold strong to their position because it opens a can of worms that the government could subpoena I- Apple anytime and start accessing other people's iPhones? You know, So that was a huge issue and... I, I gotta admit, I was a little split on that, although I was siding more with like, you know what, give it to the government because we gotta find out if there's anybody else that's gonna do this in the name of security. But then that's also the reason people hated the Patriot Act. But why do you think it didn't matter if it was left or right, whatever president came along kept renewing the Patriot Act? <laughs> so just giving you a heads up, the NSA's been around for a lot longer than that, and they're probably listening to this entire episode. Yeah, of course they're listening to it, but the thing is, are they gonna pay attention to it? That's the real question. Anyway, back to the, the subject at hand. Um, the, the of that our information is that valid in the case uh, or that valuable. So in the case of Huawei, the difference between Huawei and say these American corporations, Huawei close ties to the uh, the powerful government of China, which is a completely different economic and formal government that is here, where the people can have a say in an uproar and say, you know what, take it down, or you have the option to say, you know what, screw you, I'm going to that other place that supposedly is going to be accountable for my information. Whereas that doesn't exist in China, where they have a history of human rights violations, and if they so choose to, they can shut down any company they want, or they can support any company they want, and it can take whatever they want. That's the difference between them and here, and that is at the heart of the Huawei debate. Because people are losing sight of it. Well, there's no proof that Huawei is doing this, but we know that American corporations are doing this. That's the true concern between Huawei. Now, whether it, there's any uh, proof, well, let me rephrase. Whether they're actually doing it, we probably will never know. Because if they are, the Chinese will not let, the Chinese government is not gonna let that be known. And if they aren't, we do not have the true assurances to say it is because we can't trust the Chinese government. So see, it's it's a lose-lose. That's why there's this uh, bickering back and forth and people think that's because of the trade war per se, but it's been going on before the trade war. And it's only making things just uh, that much more difficult in that trading zone. Um, so we'll see how it all plays out. The Huawei CEO did come out to say that the, that the ban's actually a good thing for their company because it woke up all those that were stagnant in there in the research and development department and all those that kind of rested on their laurels and it stopped innovation now they're jumping on it and kind of awakening the machines that well how do we survive because you know they got so used to just climbing and now they got to fight to climb so that's he sees the bright side in things and i actually like that and he also said that he opposes a ban on apple in china that it's not that beneficial to them so with this whole thing on a global scale about our information being such a, a, a big deal, it's, it's, um, there's even companies trying to monetize on all this because uh, pr- privacy is um, our, our most expensive uh, commodity. So what can we do about it? Like what, when there's companies like that, that uh, like uh, I think it's LifeLock, for example, um, I don't see those commercials anymore that the CEO would be out there saying, this is my social security, blah, 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 try to hack it. I haven't seen those commercials in a long, long time. So I'm wondering if someone did hack it. You know, uh, th- there's a, there's a corporations that hold like uh, hackathons to try to get all these developers to and hackers together to try to find any vulnerabilities in their code and they'll patch them and they award those hackers. And when uh, someone hacked the United States government, um, when the, the dude was figured out, I believe it was a Russian operative too. It was like a Russian teenager that was figured out that was hacking the uh, government websites here in the United States. Instead of reprimanding him, they hired him. It's like, dude, you're hired. See, there's there's rewards for those kind of things, which kind of encourages some people to keep trying. But um, the thing is that uh, while we're a commodity, uh, those that, that seek after it, whether it be governments or corporations, are going to be those that will fund a way to take our information, whether we like it or not. Well, one thing that I do as a broker with my clients, buying or selling, I'm one of those that actually goes through the very thick paperwork and start reading everything out to them. I'm reading the legal jargon and then interpreting what it says to them. Most people say, this is boring, can we just get to, this, to the bottom line and just sign? No. 
unless you're reading it on your own, I'll leave it with you. Then you sign because I don't want you coming back at me and then saying, hey, Andres, you, I signed, but you didn't tell me what I was signing. Aha. You see, I'd rather cover my bases to make sure that you're being informed. So the next time you hit accept on your iTunes policy, when you're updating your iTunes, make sure you read it unless you want to end up like an incentive pad. I'm sorry. That was that was so wrong. For those of you that watch South Park, you know what I'm talking about. So um, what can you do to protect yourself? And what do I do as a broker to protect your information? Let's walk through those. Um, for example, your emails. There's um, there, there's an email up in there's an email. There's a website that was started by, I believe it was a former Microsoft uh, uh, employee or or executive. It was called Have I Been um, Have I Been uh, phoned or, or owned. Um, I'll have to look it up. And if I find it, uh, it'll be in the video description link uh, down below. It's a place where you can type in your email address to find out if you've been hacked. And I got to tell you, all my emails have been hacked. And uh, I, I actually been receiving, uh, so some of you that follow me know about this. Um, I've been um, I've been receiving emails from people of like these these shadow characters or avatars since uh since fall of last year claiming to have had my computer and all these different things it was a phishing scheme but i was i was really concerned how close they got to my actual password but then i remember that was like a super 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 old password from many 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 years ago and seeing which email was coming through that was because the yahoo incident that happened that yahoo covered up big time and all our businesses ran through that and it was concerning Concerning because the, they said they had hacked everything, they had installed malware into my keyboard and all that. So um, they had me on video cam, supposedly having fun watching adult video content and all this and that. And at first I entered a panic and then I thought about it like, um, but I haven't done any of that. So I'm like, wait a minute, what? So then as the emails kept coming, because you have 24 hours, you have one week and all this and that. As these things kept kept coming, I kept ignoring them. And sure enough, they just stopped coming to me. And they said they're going to release information to my family and all that. And, and so far, no one's received anything. But then I really got to thinking that if they did install a key logger and they had access to all this different information, they had my password and all that. I'm like, well, if you did, why don't you access my bank accounts? You have everything. So why are you asking me for money? Just take it. You know, and that's what I had a conversation with somebody uh, like that works in security. They told me, yeah, you think that everything you have is, is enough? And it's like, dude, I've done everything that possibly can be done by an individual to protect their own stuff. And if they still hack me, it's their reward. It's like, damn, you did a good job, man. Props to you. You're good. You know, it's like, dude, you're going to take it. They're gonna, you're not going to stop them. You're not going to stop somebody that wants to ruin somebody else's life. You, know, you can only hope the authorities jump into play earlier, right? So. Anyway, getting a little sidetracked there, but my email was hacked a long, long time ago because of the Yahoo incident, and they were trying to hack now, and because I've taken so many steps, especially in working in business for so long, um, I, I just uh, I had a lot of a lot of stone walls put up. One of the scariest um, tricks on me though was when somebody tricked me when I was uh, selling on eBay because I was a big reseller of tech um, on eBay that. Uh, um, when the, when the, I received an email from the buyer saying that they never received anything, and I'm like, well, that looked legit, but I'm like, but the buyer, that's that's not the guy who bought, but whatever. The message looked like a legitimate eBay message. It's a phishing scheme. I click on it. It takes me to the eBay landing page. I type in my username and password. The next page was credit card information. I'm like, no, this was the hacking scheme. So I immediately closed the browser, reopened it, um, jumped over to the actual, uh, I went to the e official eBay. And when I went there, I immediately changed my password because it was linked to PayPal, which was linked to all my bank accounts and credit cards. So I switched that. Then I forwarded that email to eBay's um, uh um, phishing uh, and, and fraud department and they said this is fraud good thing you you did what you could do to protect yourself and thank god nothing came out of it for me but this was something that just jumped out at me and that's why in business i have people asking me say hey eh, andres I'm, I'm getting uh, my my microsoft 365 uh program uh, license agreement is expiring um but uh, last i checked i just renewed it and they're like well who do, or did you buy it through microsoft or a third-party retailer a third-party retailer then ignore it because you didn't get it through Microsoft and someone's trying to trick you into thinking that yes you did and it's you're paying your third party's uh, partner that's with Microsoft to manage it for you so you're paying them you're not paying Microsoft so these they're really elaborate with their tricks so I say be careful out there and if you're getting emails especially from people you haven't heard from in a long time and it's just a link don't hit the link you can't be that stupid so I didn't open the attachment but you hit the link 
How do you think they get your uh, your address book? And they're spamming everybody. No, it's scary and crazy. So if you've been hacked, what can you do? Especially if it's your email. Well, step one, look, change your password. And change your password to something, I don't know, some people recommend a catchphrase. So because the longer the better and the more creative the better. And if it's a mix, depending on what service you use, some of them allow uh, numbers and letters as characters for your password. And some other ones even um, give you special characters with the symbols as they call it, like dollar signs, asterisks and all that. So some of them allow that. Some don't, but just FYI, some do. So create one. And if you're relying on a password keeper for all of your passwords, please don't forget your password for your password keeper. That, oh my God, I can't tell you how many times that's happened to people that I know. And it happened once to me and I've never done that again. It's like, dude, forget it. So what I do is uh is not just that i do this next step too also enable multi-factor authentication you probably know it better as two-step verification which is offered by almost every single major um uh email platform and banking platform and institution for almost anything you do online most of these offer that and what that is is that there's a second step that it, even though somebody got your password and try to log in if it's not a device recognized that you have signed into there's a second step that needs to be made and it's usually in the form of you receiving either a phone call, email, or text message to the device that you said you want to be contacted by and through with a passcode to enter as a second password to get to your information. That's what makes multi-factor authentication pretty good. So I recommend it's enabled on everything. It makes things a lot more cumbersome, especially if you're traveling out of state. It's going to suck for you because if you're trying to log in from out of state and you receive that and you have data roaming off or like you don't receive text messages or phone calls overseas, that's like the one important phone call you're going to want to take and pay a premium for. But if you're not getting any, you can't get in. Just the FYI there. And... I actually go a step further than that. I've gone beyond two-step verification to using the actual security key for my information. I lock down Google. I lock down Microsoft. And, and I run my operations through Microsoft Office. So technically, I locked, locked them down there too. So I'm using a, a security key for all that, a physical key, not a Bluetooth key like some people do because Bluetooth can easily be hacked. I'm using a physical key to lock it all down so unless somebody comes and brings it to my, um, wherever I hold it, I'm not gonna tell you where it is, um, whatever location I'm at, and they hack and they find my key, they have to have my everything to be able to use that key to then get into my information. That's as much as a precaution I can take. It's annoying as hell. It's kind of like like Windows Vista. Do you really wanna install this? Cancel or allow, cancel or allow? Yeah, it's kind of like that for me now. Hmm. Full circle, huh? Okay, next up, uh, change your security questions. You wanna update them because if someone knows you very well, they'll they'll know very well. And if you're a public figure akin to a YouTube influencer that shared a lot of their life with other people, you might be tossing out hints about yourself that someone can figure out like, oh, so-and-so likes this, type of, type of, type of, oh, look at that. So yeah, so be careful with that, especially if you're out there. Number four, update your computer's security. So yes, if, you, oh, if you're relying on McAfee or Norton, whatever antivirus you're doing, make sure it's up to date. Uh, it's, it's, a lot, it's very cumbersome, it slows on devices, but man, uh, like Windows Defender and all that, you want to maintain those things up to date because just like um, the, the common cold, is different every single year and they have to have a different vaccine for that to you know to suppress it like a different antibiotic oh this this strain is antibiotic resistant you know like wow all these different things they, that's why they stop trying to label it a different thing they give it a series absolutely but to you they just call it the cold or the flu because or else they got to name change the name all the time same principle with tech uh with with uh with uh, viruses they're always changing so that's why you want to make sure that your devices are up to date you want to make sure there's the, from their software to the security software to all the programmings that you use are always up to date don't push it off sometimes it sucks and i know windows update sometimes breaks functionality but sometimes it's, it's actually better than not unless there is a warning from the manufacturer in this case, uh, Microsoft telling you, hey, don't install it. Sometimes they'll pull it. All right. And number five, uh, 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 number five, inform your contacts. If you've been hacked, 
like I uh, like I have been, I contacted my contact. Hey, FYI, if you see an email coming from me, and if it's literally just a link, don't hit the link. You know me better than that. I don't I don't do that kind of crap. But I'm just letting you know I got hacked. You know, and you can announce it too. So those are some tips that I wanted to share with you regarding um, regarding your own security, especially when it comes to email. Cause uh, yes, we still use email. And what do I do as a broker to protect you even more? I do. N- I never send any information as an attachment. I refuse to do so. I always put it in um, in a password locked uh, cloud service that I trust with a link that's only good for you that needs to be verified by you to be able to access that. And uh, if you're gonna upload anything or send me anything, I always discourage my clients from, from attaching anything to me. That's why I, only, I give them access to that cloud folder and say you can upload directly to the cloud. Do not attach anything. So that's that's the best way I can do with my clients. We, we uh, um, I I like using uh, electronic signatures, but sometimes I try I double check. It's like I'm sending this to you for document signing. Did you get it? And if they say yes, I'm signing it now. I trust that it's them. I don't just willy nilly trust that. And oh look, they signed already. And what if they didn't? You know, somebody else probably got to it. So those things I'm always concerned about. And I always take the precautionary steps uh, along that route. And um, what I always encourage, especially in real estate, um, we have responsibilities should we handle the client's money. Like, for example, the deposit to open an escrow. I never touch those things. I always tell them escrow is sending you the instructions on how you can send it to escrow. So it doesn't go through a medium party and just just going directly to them. So those are the other steps that I also take to make sure there's fewer middle people in between that can uh, take the risk of taking uh, your not just your money but also your identity. So. Um, uh, if local colleagues, uh, not just local colleagues, colleagues of mine in real estate, make sure that you're taking those precautions because how would you want your information handled as carelessly as you do? Because I know some people that just, they just don't care. They're just trying to get something done. It's like, I just need this information now. It's like, well, yeah, good luck when you're sued because it's your responsibility for what happens to that individual's information. How many people sued Chase? And I think it was Citibank after the hack that happened in Target that forced almost everybody to get the chips now on their cards, you know, and same thing with with Home Depot. You know, anything could be hacked at any time. The thing that freaked me out, too, was with Samsung about a year ago, they had an exploit on their Samsung keyboard. I don't use it, but it updates in the background. And there was an exploit through the update in the server for the keyboard to hack your phone. Holy smokes, they can get through anything. Or how about that infamous, um, the Daily News, Sun, whatever, Sky News, hacking celebrity devices in the UK? Those were iPhones, not just Android. So, oh, Android is secure than iPhone. Well, iPhones were the ones being hacked and they were getting all celebrity pictures through that. You know, these things happen. That's why there's still a place for a BlackBerry. And that's why I carry one still. I, I cannot just willingly rely on anything else. So do what you can. Use biometrics as much as you can on devices that permit it. Um, and just do secure passwords. Don't don't do something so common don't put your birth date come on please don't do that that's oh my goodness that that is so 1990 something (laughs) anyway that's my that's my long talk about uh the issues with privacy nowadays and what you can do to prevent yourself from being hacked and that does it for this video. So you guys have any questions like, hey, you know what? Let me ask you this because I don't have all the answers. What are you guys doing to protect your own privacy? You can share in the comments down below because I'm curious. Some pe- some other people are going to want to know because some of these things are probably not available in the region you're in because my videos are, are, are worldwide reaching. So if, if you're is somewhere else that doesn't have some of the things that we have available to, for that kind of locking down, uh, what do you do? Besides Mr. Robot stuff, okay, that's like completely off the deep end in doing that i i know those are things you can do but i have to be in a connected world unfortunately um like what are you doing to take care of your information and if you're not you should so watch out for that especially when uh, facebook's selling all your information to anybody too and you can't just delete a facebook man that's scary you can you can tell google delete my information you can't do the same thing with facebook they need to approve it first the heck it's me and my information not yours facebook Freaking Facebook, man. And they own WhatsApp and Instagram. 
think about it. All right. I'm tired of scaring people, <laughs> and that's it for this video. So like, share, subscribe, stay in the know, hit the notification bell. You want to stay up to date. Podcasts are coming. They will be posted to the uh, to the channel here because some interesting topics that I, I need to have a wider reach for also you be informed, especially if you're in California. You're going to want to know about the big battles coming up. And as a warning, I get a little animated in some of those, so you're going to accuse me of, of politicizing or politicking something believe me i am leaving the politics out of it i'm hitting you with facts because facts don't care about emotions and that's what i deal with and coming from the political world i can tell you that a lot of people confuse emotions for facts no your emotions mean nothing in the face of what is factual regardless of how much i might disagree with something so that's that and i'll see you on the next video And that does it for this edition of The Andres Segovia Show. Remember to like, share, and subscribe wherever you might be listening to the program so you can be in the know. If you want a question featured on the program, you can reach me on Facebook and Instagram, same handle, at The Andres Segovia, on Twitter, at underscore Andres Segovia, and, of course, email at andres at segoviares.com. Thank you so much for listening to the program, and I'll see you on the next one.